Come on, girls. Looks like we got one in heat, a couple in heat. Was you drinking milk? What well, you? You got a milk mustache. Hi guys, Russ here from Wilson Land and Cattle Company. Tall grass grazing, is it beneficial or is it not beneficial? We do a lot of tall grass grazing here on our farm and we're gonna get into the details. Before we get started, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, like, comment, share with a friend. We have a new merch store, I'll put a link in the description below to that. Let's get started. Tall grass grazing, adaptive grazing. Miss Paige, you're being bad today, aren't you? Huh? You being bad? Walk up. Good girl. That'll do. Come on. That'll do. Good girl. Load up. That's enough, Paige. Go back. Ah, uh -uh. that'll do. Load up. Load up. I know, you've been wanting to chase today. You've been wanting to chase, huh? You were herding guineas at six o'clock this morning, weren't you? A little girl there had 60 or 50 or 60 guineas in a tight group, herding them just as if I was giving her commands to do it. So hopefully we can get that. We're gonna start training her shortly here. Why tall grass grazing? Adaptive grazing? High stock density grazing, whole system grazing, you can call it whatever you want. But for us here on the farm, the reason that we do a lot of tall grass grazing, and that's my preferred grazing method, if I possibly can. And I'm gonna show you, at the end of the video, I have a couple great time lapses of the cows grazing in tall grass. Watch to the end of the video and, and check those time lapses out, they're pretty cool. For us, tall grass grazing means 100% more carrying capacity on the farm. Yes, I can graze 100% more cattle by doing this method of grazing versus making hay, it's storing it and feeding it back. When we were, when we were making hay, our farm could only produce enough forage to sustain 45 animal units. Our farm today, we can sustain 90 animal units. We have 145 acres. Those 90 animal units are for 300 plus days a year. Last year it was 317 grazing days. What's the matter, Blueberry? Is she messing with you? That's our main reason for tall grass grazing. And it has a lot of names for it. We always put a back fence. We always use a back fence. The cows are only in a paddock for no longer than about 12 hours at a, period, at a time. Maybe 16 hours if it's at, if they're moved at night. And we put a back fence so they can't go back and regraze what has already started to grow. I like to tell people, take half, leave half. We look over here, and you gotta consider that's half the biomass. So the, top, the plant is lighter at the top. So if you take a 24 inch plant, you may graze 18 inches off of it and leave six inches stand. This here's about take half, leave half. We like to have 30% tramp down and 20% standing to reseed the pasture fields. We keep water in the paddock with them at all times. The water is over here in this corner. We do on average two moves per day. We've been known to move the cattle up to 10 times a day. If we need to do a high stock density graze, if we have a weed problem, um, if we need to get uh, nutrients spread out onto the soil, 
better, we'll, we'll do a high stock density graze, maybe move them eight times a day. And we don't do that to every field. It's very time consuming. It takes about, to do eight moves a day, it takes me from leaving the house till I get back, it takes about three hours a day if I'm moving them eight times a day. So if I'm moving them four times a day, we're looking at about an hour and a half. If I'm moving them twice a day, it takes me about 45 minutes a day to take care of these cows. This here's in the in the tall grass grazing or adaptive grazing or whole systems grazing. We're working more with nature than working against her. And as many of you know, if you try to work against mother nature, she's going to push back and you're going to have all kinds of problems. In this type of grazing, we don't clip our pasture fields. We have not clipped. There's four fields here. Not one of these fields have been clipped since 2011. And you can see there's no brush, there's no briars, there's no weeds. You know, take, take a look at that up across there. Here's field one, field two, and then another field. There's a field up along the pine trees up there that we haven't grazed yet. We're gonna move in there once we get this field here grazed off. Doing a tall grass grazing, we're able to have longer rest periods. Having the longer rest periods help our root systems and get our plants larger and more robust. Having the larger plants, this is because the grass can penetrate into the soil, accessing more minerals, trace elements, and water. That's why we don't suffer the summertime slump or the summertime droughts as a lot of folks do is because we have these deep root systems. And we don't take more than 50%. The reason being for that is if we take more than 50% of the plant, we're actually gonna, the roots are gonna die back. So for example, if we take 70% of that plant, those roots may die back to 80%. And we shorten those roots up out of the soil to where they can't access the nutrients in the, in the water that they need. Having those larger root systems help the arbuscular mycorrhizae fungi better to attach to those plants and, and help gather those nutrients in water. I argue with a lot of folks that this isn't a balanced diet. This is a very balanced diet because we have plants in all stages of growth in here. We have plants that are just starting to sprout. We have mature plants. We have medium plants. They're in all stages of growth. The nutrition is balanced out a lot better and, and the livestock get a better, better balanced diet. And I know a lot of folks like to talk about pounds and I'll, I'll throw this number out here. It's not something that I do every year. I don't weigh the calves. You know, it's more about pounds per acre than it is pounds per day. But on average, our calves gain 2.8 pounds a day. The organic levels are gonna be higher. Tramping this extra forage, what they don't eat, they tramp, and we're gonna recycle that back into the soil. And we know what organic matter does for the soil. Just 1% in organic material can increase the water holding capacity of that soil by 27,000 gallons. 27,000 gallons, it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. Whenever you figure, there was a research paper that came out of the University of Georgia, and in that research paper, it says it takes 210,000 gallons of water to produce one ton of fescue dry matter we need to hold as much water as we can in order to keep that productive especially you guys in the in the western states or in the more arid brittle parts of the area you need to be able to capture and hold as much water as you can in that soil so you can be more productive we have more biodiversity whenever we let our plants get up nice and tall now the cows have gone through here already and picked the clover and the alfalfa here's some over here i guess we have canary grass, annual bluegrass, velvet grass. Timothy. Rush. Sedge. What's left of a red clover? Here's a white clover.
There's a curly dock. Dandelion. So we have a lot of biodiversity in there. And some of those root systems, such as the Timothy, those root systems don't go down very far. That's where our partnerships come into play with our microbes in trying to get those roots as deep as possible. That Timothy may hook onto a mycorrhizae fundi can pull nutrients as far as six inches away from that root to feed that plant. So whenever you have a root system like that and you increase that area that it's able to pull nutrients from, that is extremely important. Here's some L-site clover. Good two feet tall. What are the challenges of tall grass grazing? Probably the biggest challenge for a lot of folks is setting fence and moving cows. And the number two challenge is, is getting water into the paddock that they're in. Neither one of them have to be that big of a deal. Um, it's just a matter of committing to setting fence and learning how to set that fence. You can be very efficient. Like I said earlier, I can move these cows twice a day in 45 minutes. That's from the house, leaving the house till the time I get back to the house twice a day. And that includes tearing the fence out. The next challenge is water. You can see this cow up here, she's drinking. And no hydrant for this field is up in that other field. And we have about three or 400 feet of garden hose on there. And whenever we move it, it was sitting down here by this reel down here. And it's kind of a pain in the neck to move it up through here across the field but so we 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 skip a wire and we move it up to here now tomorrow morning when i'm whenever i move the cows into here i just slip the tub underneath the the wire and we're ready to go the benefit from keeping the water in the pasture back fencing keeping the nutrients keeping your soil nutrients where they need to be is, gonna... is going to improve your overall production okay guys i'm going to put the grazing time lapses on i have two of them there for you to watch they're pretty cool Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, smash that notification bell. We have a new merch store, I'll put a link in the description below. We'll talk to you later, so long.